So in this video, we're going to talk about lithium iron phosphate longevity. I just made a video about it and I made very crystal clear instructions on how to keep these batteries cycling for a very long time. I said that if you use it for solar, you should charge to 100% and then down to 0%. And if you put it into storage, you need to keep it at 50%. And people are losing their minds. They can't understand the logic here. They're saying you can't keep it at 100%. That's going to hurt the battery. Now in this video, I'm going to rant ramble on about how these batteries work in a system and how they're cycled throughout a day when you use it for solar. Because nothing I am saying is special or new or goes against any of the literature currently available. So the first thing we need to talk about is the 100% and 0%. First of all, if you're charging to 100% with a solar system and you have loads and you're cycling that battery once a day, you're not going to be at 100% for very long. And sometimes you're not at 100% long enough to balance the cells. And if you don't balance the cells, the longevity of that cell will be affected. If there's a massive imbalance in your bank, and one cell is hitting a higher voltage before the others, only that cell, and it's being held at a higher state of charge compared to the others, that one will fail first. So in a solar system, you need to balance the cells. That means you need to charge to 100%. Now lithium iron phosphate has a relatively flat charge and discharge curve. Just because they're at the same voltage and you balance them at any state of charge between 20 and like 80, you are not actually balancing the cells. To balance them effectively for this chemistry alone, not other lithium ion variants, you have to charge it to 100%. You do not need an active balancer and whether you use the active balancer or a passive dissipative balancer, you still need to get that battery to 100%. And in a solar system, you're not at 100% for very long at all. If you used your batteries through the night, you're charging back up to 100%. And sometimes people don't even reach 100% which can cause a problem on its own. You need to keep those batteries charged so you get a good balance. Next, you wanna discharge the battery to 0%. That is fine and safe to do. And if you plan your solar power system with backup power for a rainy day, you'll never hit 0%. So don't be scared of it because you're not even hitting it. Now my recommendation for charging to 100% and going down to 0% will keep you around 50% if you properly size your system. Now if every night you use your system, you're always at 0% by morning, you need more batteries or you need more solar. And if your battery is always at 100%, you should use your power. Why do you even have a solar power system if you're not using it? The next recommendation was when you put them into storage, you have to keep them at 50%. The reason I told you to do that is because we don't want to keep them at 100% because it does increase the rate of degradation. That's why I said 50% and that's why I said 100 to 0%. It's very simple. Now in past videos, I've covered this so many times. I've showed the graphs, I've showed exact sentences from studies, I've showed the results of tests and people still are questioning this stuff. What I am telling you is exactly what the literature recommends. Nothing I'm saying in my video is special or new. What I am saying is people are messing up by not keeping their batteries charged enough to balance them. Because if one cell is being more abused than the other ones, you're going to have a problem sooner. The cells need to be cycled together. They need to be at the same state of charge to stay healthy. Next, I talked about high ambient temperature environments and how it can increase the rate of degradation. And it is absolutely true. And we've been doing that in testing for multiple years on this channel here in Las Vegas. And if your batteries are inside a building, you don't have to worry about this. Now, I also said on my forum, if I was pushing lithium iron phosphate to its thermal limits, I would suggest a water cooling system, balanced charging on every cycle with a high balance current, internal cell temp monitoring throughout the pack, high accuracy voltage sensing across the pack for BMS to do its job properly and quickly, large bus bars so heat is not created near the cells, and adequate room for expansion and contraction, but depending on the cell design, it can vary. Next, I would plan for obsolescence, an easy method for cellar module swapping. That was if we were pushing lithium iron phosphate to the limit, but for solar, all you need to worry about is charging up enough to get them balanced, which a lot of people are not doing with the solar system, and ensuring they're not in a hot environment. And charging and discharging at a low C rate does not create that much heat. 
So slowly cycling up to 100 and down to zero is not an issue. Now, a lot of these degradation studies with cycling are actually at a one C rate and they're rapid. They did not cycle these batteries for 15 years at a slow rate like we do for solar. They're cycling them in a laboratory nonstop at one C. And that is much more strenuous than anything you'll do with the solar system. But even in that scenario, the reported degradation figures are not that bad. Also, if you look at EVs with lithium iron phosphate cells, which are used outside in the heat of summer and charged very quickly, the degradation rate is so minimal. So who cares? The warranties and the recommendations by these manufacturers with the studies that we have right now are the most conservative figures that you can get because they have to pay for it if it's not. And this is the same with solar cells. A lot of people say, oh, 25 years, 80% output. Wow, so my solar panels are gonna be at 80% after 20 years, false. Now there are studies of desert solar farms where the degradation rate is about the same as a warranty period. And that's when they're pushing them to the absolute limit. Most old solar panels, especially used solar panels, have plenty of output. So much output that you can use used solar panels. They're actually a great deal. When a manufacturer states that after 20 years, it's gonna have 80% of its rated output, expect 85 to 90%. And same is true with lithium iron phosphate batteries. If you're charging and discharging them slowly and all day with the solar system, it's hanging around 50% that thing is gonna have minimal degradation. Now, what I said in my video is that the most common thing that will happen is the FET-based BMS will fail. And that is common, but for some reason, people obsess over the cells and they don't think about the entire system or where the system is stored or how often you're using your system. If you're not balancing your cells often, they're gonna become imbalanced. And then people on the forum are surprised when they have a massive imbalance. It's because you're not using your system or you don't have enough solar or you don't have have enough batteries or you neglected a battery and you just left it somewhere and you didn't charge it that's how you kill these batteries and that's what my video covered typically the calendar aging will actually kill them first the degradation rate of just the cell on its own over 20 years you're gonna have capacity fade over time and what I said in my first video is that the most capacity that you have available is today. So you should use it. Now I've noticed that a lot of people stress about these batteries for some reason. They obsess over the cell voltages. They get these active balancers. They check their system every single day. If I have to check a system, I did something wrong. My system should run itself. It's a power system. And I'm gonna get as much power as I can out of it every single day I can. Why buy a system and not use it and let it age on its own? I just don't understand the logic, especially if the electricity in your area is expensive. Modifying your cycling bandwidths or your thresholds to not use 40% of your capacity today so you can get an extra 5% in 20 years does not make any sense. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is with solar systems in lithium iron phosphate. If we were doing NMC or NCA, I would have a completely different recommendation altogether. I would say never charge to 100% at all. Charge to 80% always, because it doesn't need to be at 100% for it to balance those cells. Now, my Model X has 50,000 miles, and guess what I charged it to? 76%. Is this lithium iron phosphate? Absolutely not. Something else we need to discuss is cobalt oxide lithium ion variants and how they differ. Because again, I look at the comments online and people have no clue what they're talking about, especially with fires, especially with electric vehicles. Whenever I mention that, I get down votes, but people don't understand the technology. And nothing I'm saying is new or special, nothing on this channel. Everything that I've tested, I've gotten the same results as the literature. There's nothing special here. I'm just trying to make it more simple for beginners to understand. If you're using it for solar, charge to 100%. If you store it, keep it at 50% and check on it and avoid hot environments. That's it. That's all that video was stating and people were losing their mind. They're like, no, I'm not going to charge to 100%. Why not? You will not balance effectively. I keep saying this over and over again, but it's crazy because I've said this for years and people don't seem to learn. I repeat myself. I show you the graphs. I link the studies and still time and time again, it's not heard. I hope this video clears it up and I hope you guys, I'll see you tomorrow. I have a new video coming out and I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.